gratitude. What kind of difference does it make when you live in gratitude? Being grateful for all the things that you wished would happen in your life or even silently wished within, but it came to pass. What about all the things that you really, really feel upset, distressed about? Are you supposed to feel gratitude for those two? Hi, I'm Reverend Allie Bierman. Thank you for joining us today for the Let's Get Metaphysical show where we connect you with the invisible forces driving your life in each moment. Let's continue. The things that happen in your life that you wish hadn't happened, why are they there? Everything that you attract in your life, you create. There are no accidents. And when the things come into your life that you really wish didn't happen, well, what I do for myself and what I do from working with a client is look at what is it that's missing from my life that I don't know is missing from my life, that when I bring that into my world, then... I feel more complete because it fills in pieces that I didn't even know were disconnected or were missing. Now, many people recite gratitude as affirmations. And then whose affirmations are they? And are they the same day after day after day because they're trying to create a habit? Because, and the numbers vary from 21 days to, I think it's 90 days. And all the steps in between, people are trying to make a habit of speaking other people's desires. And usually not in a way the affirmations will work. By the way, many years ago, I just got too frustrated. So I created a CD of a couple calls that I did with people I was working with at the time, all about how to speak affirmations that actually work. Imagine that. When you know how to speak your affirmations, they actually work. And if you look in the show notes, you'll see how you can get hold of them for yourself. But then looking back at, well... I don't want to speak somebody else's affirmations. I'm not coming from their heart. They don't know what's in my experience. When I had the first brain injury, and I've had a number of brain injuries, and I'll tell you what, no such thing in the world as a minor brain injury. I knew to look for the gifts in my life. And in the rehab center, the psychologist said, you know, the only people I've ever seen heal are the people who look for the gifts in the injury. So part of looking for the gifts was feeling happy and grateful for things. And in fact, I created the habit of happiness by creating the Happy Share Movement, which you can find both on Facebook and as a site of its own. And check those links in the show notes. So when I go through my morning rituals, and that includes blessings, it includes what I feel happy and grateful for, that's the last thing I do in my morning ritual routine, is I speak 10 things, 10, for which I feel happy and grateful. There are things I feel happy and grateful for in that moment, which means they change from day to day. Unlike affirmations, especially somebody else's affirmations, that are repeated. Well, if you're repeating them, do they have the same impact? Because they're not coming from your heart. So, by listing 10 things for which I feel happy and grateful every morning, what does that do? It sets my day up 
for all these good feelings. It sets my frame of mind into a place for looking for things to continue to feel happy and grateful. And as I said, things don't have to be all the way you wish they'd be. I remember very, very many years, decades ago, I used to think I had this goal of where I wanted to go in my life. And every time something happened, it was usually a family thing, it took me away from the goal. And I call them detours. You know what? You never have a detour in your life. Never. Never have a detour in your life. Everything that happens in your life is meant for you to grow in a direction maybe you're not aware of. So when I discovered that truth, I realized, oh, there is never a detour in my life. There's a path I would not have chosen to take consciously, but everything that I learned by being on the path I didn't know I was going to be on was needed in my world to help me move through my life in a way that got me to the direction I wasn't at first knowing I wanted to go. So when you're looking for things that appear to be, oh, why did that happen to me? First of all, nothing happens to you. It doesn't even happen for you. It happens because of you. You're creating it with the aid of the universe or God or whatever term you use for the energies that are co-creating your world. You get to take the journey you weren't consciously choosing, but that changed your whole world. Here's a really big example that you might uh, take issue with. The way, and yes, I'm a minister. So yes, I have an entire routine of forgiveness because forgiving is forgiving love. The people who come into your life, who hurt you, who you think hurt you because you translate or interpret their actions as being hurtful to you. When you look at all the long list of people who hurt you, what you come up with is thanking them for doing what they did because it got your attention and it forced you to act differently than you've ever acted before. So that that kind of response from those people, it's not going to happen again. It's not going to hurt you again. Because you recognize, wow, I got to develop this skill. Wow, I never thought of that particular interpretation for how it's a gift in my life. So I recommend that you look for the things that you think you don't want in your life, and you'll notice that you attracted them, that you, not somebody else, that you created them. Why? Why do you think? Because the universe wanted you to know something that was missing from your life, and you weren't getting the message, and you weren't seeing the path that would have empowered you. So, when something happens in my life that I really don't like, I wake up to the fact that the hmm, universe is trying to tell me something and I've been missing the message. Well, it's like before the first brain injury that happened for me. I was working in crisis care and I was having really great results. So I had to do it behind closed doors because I did it work according to mainstream psychology. And here came this enormous, extremely dangerous person who attacked somebody pretty much every two weeks, and yet was put back into the world. Anyway, when she cornered and attacked me, the huge gift 
it was very painful physically, emotionally. It was three years before I had a semblance of the life that I had known previously. But when I did, I recognized the fact that I didn't want to be working where I was working. I didn't want to be working with the population I was working. I didn't want to be working with the co-workers I was working with or the unsafe facility where I was working. And I knew that, and I knew that, and I knew that. And I didn't take any steps to leave there. So here comes the universe with hitting me over the head with a two by four, which it actually was because her hand was bigger than my head, and she was incredibly strong. Anyway, it freed me to jump into the world where I really belong, and that's the world of energy. And I've been changing lives for the last, mm, somewhere around 30 years, because the only way that I got to heal was by working with people who already worked in energy healing. And I studied what they did and I studied lots and lots of people and everything that worked for me, I pulled the pieces together. And the universe downloaded the modality that is my own and that I used with people today to change their lives. And they don't have to talk to me and tell me anything because I know how to read their energy now. So everything happens perfectly for a beautiful and divine reason. Everything, including the stuff that looks really cruddy. So I do the affirmations in the morning, and that's just my energy for the day. And then, last thing before going to sleep at night, I list 10 things for which I feel happy and grateful in that moment. In other words, things that happen during that day. And what does that do? That sets up my energy for a very peaceful, empowering sleep. So speaking, I'm happy and grateful in the morning and at night. And if I get really stressed, upset during the day, I'll just go in that moment. I will speak 10 things for which I feel happy and grateful in that moment. I always do each thing in that moment. Because what happened in the past will happen in the future. They don't exist anymore. All that exists is that moment. Thank you so much for joining us again. I am Reverend Ellie Bierman. This is Let's Get Metaphysical Show. And I have a different kind of book I'm recommending today. And darn it, isn't available in audio yet. I'm going to make that recommendation, though. It's called If Natural Paths Are Quacks, Then I Must Be a Duck. And this is one of the most phenomenal books that I've ever read by one of the most brilliant people I've ever known. She has people coming to her from all over the world. Literally, people will fly halfway around the world to see her. People from every single state in the U.S., from 12 countries around the world. If you have a problem nobody's been able to help you with, she does do telehealth. So you don't have to make the trip. It's just when you do, she gets to use her special equipment. So go ahead and check out the link for that. And as I said, it's not available in Audible. However, Audible still has that special gift for you. It's a whole 30-day free trial. Go and choose the audio book of your choice. And I've certain listed lots and lots of recommendations for where you are in your life at the time. But whatever topic you're into, go and look around. That's why you have a whole month. And then download the audiobook of your choice. Now, if you're looking for the affirmations, go ahead and again, check the show notes. Take care of yourself. I mean, 
really take care of yourself because no one in the world can take as good care of you as you. And if you're hurting physically, emotionally, confused spiritually, you may be suffering. Know that struggle is optional. And when you contact me, I will work with you to clear out the struggle, to stop the hurting, and to experience life as a vibrant, beautiful world, taking the so-called good and the so-called bad, and take this bit of advice from Bob Proctor. Because energy's balanced. And what he taught me was, if anything's a little bit good, it's also a little bit bad. If it's a lot bad, it's also a lot good. And it's how you look at it that determines which it is for you. You get to choose everything and anything in your life. You get to choose how you want to see it, how you want to take it in and use it. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because nothing, 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 nothing in your world ever happens outside of you. Which begs the question, does the world even exist outside of what's in here? And I look forward to being here with you next time.